welcome to our home. We're in Southeast Michigan and we're gonna have a little fun today retelling a short story that happened to me today here in our backyard with this woodchuck. I'll explain woodchuck in just a moment. Um, a couple of hours ago I took this um, woodchuck uh, with this 25 caliber Hatson AT 44 long rifle. This rifle has not shot any animal before and today it shot the largest woodchuck that I have taken and this is an old boy he's got a lot of gray hair one round and got him right in the head um, and it all happened quick and fast I'm sorry it's not on film but I'll uh, share the story with you anyway I had uh, taken this gun and I had put a, uh, a regulator in it. it took me several hours and then I came out here at my shooting bench and started shooting and normally at 65 yards that's what I uh, put all of my 25 caliber air rifles sight them in for because that's just about where they get the most game and they'll do a, a nice grouping about this size here but once this was regulated oh I was putting seven or eight almost on top of each other at 65 yards so I couldn't be happier the gun was sighted in and I spotted this woodchuck over my shoulder he was about 85 yards out and uh, uh, he saw me I saw him I couldn't go get one of my 357s I couldn't get my favorite for woodchuck and that was a, a Benjamin uh, Armada in 25 caliber it's got a, a Walther barrel in it so it's extremely accurate I didn't have a chance to go do any of that I just had this Hatson 25 caliber and uh, I couldn't have been happier with it sighted in as uh, I had just completed um, and so I decided to take it with this by the time I took it it was 92 yards at least that's what my uh, rangefinder tells me but first let me tell you something about this guy uh, first of all I didn't mispronounce him a moment ago when I said woodchuck that's the original name of woodchucks was given to it by uh, the Algonquin Indians in kind of the New York New Jersey area uh, and uh, uh, the pilgrims had a little trouble pronouncing woodchuck so they ultimately transitioned it to woodchuck um, today the woodchuck has a bunch of names some people just call it a chuck some people call it a groundhog uh, some call it uh, a land uh, pig land pig uh, and uh, some call it a whistling pig because when they communicate with each other they do a, a bit of a whistle so uh, uh, they've got all these names one thing for sure these woodchucks are the third largest rodent in America uh, they're not stupid in fact they're quite smart this one which I've never laid eyes on he knew uh, from 85 yards away that I was a threat to him and so he started moving now they don't move very fast but he was moving uh, about as fast as he could go back to his den and I did a shrill whistle which caused him to stop and he looked up at me and uh, I later determined that was 92 yards and with one round I, I put one right through the head there was no uh, death dance or anything else he just was dead at that moment but they can be quite destructive. And that's why the state of Michigan, and maybe your state too, doesn't have any um, uh, hard rules about harvesting them. In fact, you can take woodchuck 12 months of the year. Uh, you should have a small game license, but it's not necessary if they're doing damage. Now I carry every license there possibly could be, but I didn't need license for these woodchucks. I can show any game warden all the trouble that these things do. They can destroy the foundation of your home, rock walls, which we have, and we don't want them to sink in and 
the boulders all fall in. But that's the power they have. They can destroy your garden. They can destroy your lawn. They're very, very destructive. Um, let me tell you a story about a friend of mine named Fred. Fred retired from Little Caesars, you know, Little Caesars headquarters is here in Michigan. And when he retired, he decided to take up some farming on his place. And he had a, a big tractor. And he had a barn with a dirt floor. And he decided to have a cement floor put in that barn. And he then liked to park that tractor and other things on that cement floor. It had a guarantee for one year against any sort of cracks. Well, about 10 months went by. He pulled in, parked it, went in the house. The next morning when he came out, that cement floor had caved in and his tractor was in that hole. He ultimately called uh, the cement contractor who came out and they pulled the cement out and found a hole under the floor, the size of a Volkswagen. Five woodchuck families had nested there, they estimate. And there was no warranty against woodchuck damage. Uh, and so my friend Fred had to had to pay for a whole new cement floor, had to pay for the cleanup, and then to add the insult to injury, he had to pay for eradication of those woodchucks uh, following that incident. Oh, he still gets mad about it if I ask him about it. But uh, they can be very destructive. Uh, they can carry rabies. They can be aggressive towards small dogs and children and they can even be aggressive towards adults. They've got natural enemies. Uh, hawks would be one. Uh, bobcats, coyotes, fox, and certainly man. And large dogs. Fortunately, we have some large Dobermans here on the property. But uh, the way most of them are taken is by automobile, by man. And uh, like I said, they're slow, they're not real fast, and when they cross the street, they're not too fast. So it's estimated that the greatest number are harvested on the highways. Um, you can trap them, but you gotta be careful about trapping. Any metal trap, they can chew their way out of a metal trap in about a day and a half. So be careful using that, make sure you get back there before that happens. Uh, you can use garden vegetables but there's some vegetables they like better than any other vegetable. And that would be red apples and red cabbage and cantaloupe uh, would be uh, some of their favorites. And you've got to put a little bit of appetizer outside the cage. And then you got to put a whole bunch in the cage because they, they're not comfortable in a trap and they won't go there unless they think there's a whole Thanksgiving dinner waiting for them. So uh, put a bunch inside. And then like I say, don't leave it for long. Uh, I've done some trapping here and I find that they leave the trap alone for three days and then I catch them in the, after three days. They, they gotta sniff around it and really check it out. I think I'll have some of that on some trail camera video for you in the future. Um, beside the trap, you can also use poison. There's some poisons for these things. Uh, you can put it in their dens. Uh, University of Michigan, here in Southeast Michigan, uh, somebody on their gardening uh, team said, uh, well, we've got a lot of woodchucks here and I know a way to get rid of them. And they put dry ice in the den. And when the first time I heard it, I thought, dry ice, are they eating it? Is it bad for their insides, dry ice? No, they weren't eating it. What happened was when you put dry ice down in a den, it evaporates and all of the oxygen is pushed out and a gas is left behind and you can't survive in that gas. So that's how they were killing them and the Humane Society found out about it and ultimately uh, uh, had them quit. I'm guessing they went to regular poisons, if you will. Um, this woochuck, woodchuck. He's got a lot of gray hair. I think he's the grandfather of them all. I've, like I said, I've shot a bunch. This is the biggest one I've ever gotten. All the gray hair on him. In fact, his face was so gray at a distance, my first thought was that he was a possum. And I thought, what is a possum doing out during daylight hours 
it might be ra rabies. Uh, once I got him in my scope, I saw that it was, as the Algonquin Indians called it, a woochuck. Um, I hit this woochuck at uh, 92 yards, uh, right over my shoulder, uh, about 10 yards from that tree line behind me. And that would be the longest shot for this gun. I have shot one at 96 yards. That would be my farthest. Uh, with a pellet rifle, not too bad, I don't think. Let me wrap this up and tell you something that's uh, important. Once you uh, look this video, if you thought it had any value, uh, give us a thumbs up. Those who know me know that when you don't give a thumbs up, Google gives us a thumbs down and that number determines whether we get any exposure and videos that are running up the side of your computer screen or cell phone screen or on the bottom and if you don't have a little bit of cooperation with Google boy you get lost in the oblivion of zillions of, of uh, YouTubers that are out there so give us a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and, and subscribe we have 600 Plus subscribers now and all that gets you into is we notify you every other week that a new video is out and you can unsubscribe if you found out that you don't quite get anything out of these um, and leave a comment I love comments I answer all of my own we've got 60,000 plus viewers from all over the world and some of them Brazil and Mexico and Turkey and and France and England and Spain and I enjoy getting on the computer early in the morning and answering those to the best of my ability. Even remembering some of the Spanish I have for those folks. Uh, because while I live here on the Canadian border of the United States, I was born on the Mexican border of this United States in a place called El Paso, Texas. Well, we'll see you again next week. Thanks again for seeing us.